All right, what's up guys? Now that we got the engine out of my car, we're gonna go ahead and go through everything and dismantle the entire engine and basically see if we can get some salvageable parts out of this engine. So if these irons are, sorry, these housings are still good, we're gonna go ahead and still use these. Now, we're gonna find out also if this is actually a 13B RE engine out of the Cosmo as opposed to the REW, which we thought it was uh, evidently, but uh, we did notice a couple of things. It does have an ACT and, and flywheel clutch combo. So there is a little bit of money that was put into this part uh, of the engine. So that's a good sign. But then again, we still haven't dismantled the engine. So we really don't know exactly what is actually pretty good in this engine right now. Um, and also the rotors that goes along the, along the way with that. So if the rotors are still good, we're going to be able to use those. And that'll save us a lot of money uh, in rebuilding this engine. A lot of things, you know, we got to check the e-shaft, make sure there's no grooves or anything in it. Same with the irons. Um, other than that, we're going to pull out the intake manifold because that's going to give us a good clue if it's a Cosmo RE. And, I mean, the art, the oil pan, you know, kind of gives it away as it could be a Cosmo RE. So we're going to tear it apart, make sure, you know, let's see what's going on in it. Um, they did some weird stuff, like they pulled out the uh, inserts for the exhaust ports, so I don't know why they did that exactly, because that kind of disrupts the flow coming out of the exhaust ports. Well, it kind of makes it turbulent, not disrupts, but makes it turbulent instead of a nice smooth flow. So we're going to figure out what's going on with that. Um, other than that, we're going to get into this, tear it apart, and then take you guys along the way. Alright guys, so now we got the oil pan off, the intake manifold off, along with the front cover, and the clutch. So, um, things we notice, there's no bolt holes to mount for an RE, or an REW, sorry. So, that's a sign that's an RE, uh, Cosmo RE. Along with these exhaust ports, these things are massive compared to the REW. And this is what I was talking about. They didn't have any inserts for the uh, exhaust ports, which is kind of weird. But yeah, so we're going to get into tearing this completely down. And we'll show you guys all of that. Alright guys, so now we have all the bolts out of the motor. So now we're going to pop off the rear iron and see what the heck's going on in here. I'm a little nervous about this. <laughs> Dude, everything's just done in here. Uh, just, um, I can't <laughs> stop saying that. <laughs> um, well, you know, based upon what we got, I am not gonna be surprised what we find. Dude, this thing is really on there. Probably. There, we we know they did use water, um, because a lot of the inserts are kind of like rusted. <laughs> oh. oh, that shit. Yeah, that key right there. We got one little piece. Alright, let's see. There it goes. That's not coming off smooth, so. Alright guys, so we have the motor, or the rear iron taken off. This is what we got. I mean, it doesn't look too bad in there. Um, it looks like somebody did some porting. Um, there's not very much carbon buildup on the rotors, which is kind of good. Um, everything kind of looks okay, um, except, I don't know if you can see, but, come on focus. Oh, okay, but. So the little uh, inner part of the corner seal is like smashed in. I don't know why. And along with this one, which you can kind of see a little bit better. But yeah, so I don't get why they did that. Okay, and then on here, when we were, so on this iron, 
when I was looking at it, you could see there's like copper showing and then there's uh, some spots where it looks like some bearing material got welded into the bearing, which is not good. So that, we're gonna have to replace uh, the rear stationary gear bearing and probably some other bearings. We're gonna check them all out. Actually, we'll probably just replace all the bearings just because. How come they never, how come they didn't build these apex wheels into these like rotors? What do you mean? Like why didn't they just build them into it? Like why didn't they Like just one piece? Because these need to be able to move. You know what I mean? They gotta be able to flex and move. And then plus, imagine if this was all built into one piece and then you had to replace it. Oh, you'd have to replace it. Yeah. yeah. So at least these are wearable parts and you can just replace them whenever you know you need to. Yeah. I mean, dude, I mean, each rotor is like seven, eight hundred bucks. Yeah. So think about how every time you replace your or rebuild your motor and these are messed up, you gotta. Spend, the whole entire thing. Yeah, it's been like 14, 15, or 1600 bucks to do it. No, I'm good. Shit. No wonder why everybody does LS swaps. <laughs> but alright, so right now we're going to pull out the uh, rotor, see how it's doing, check the bearing and everything. So. Oops. Dropping up, oh, there's a corner seal of the apex. Apex is free. We're not going to be reusing any of the apex seals or springs in it, so that way, so don't ask why we're not saving the spots of where they're supposed to be. Um, that that's basically what a rotor looks like. Yeah, this is what a rotor are looks not like. Really like familiar with it? Yeah. So um, there's some weird wear patterns in the bearing on this one too. But it's nowhere near as bad as the stationary gear bearing. The rotor looks like in good shape. Not very much carbon buildup on it, which is good. So, let's do it. I wish I had a silver sharpie. So, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna mark this as front iron or front rotor, sorry. Sorry, no rear. Rear iron. Rear rotor. Keep calling it rotor. Iron. Okay. Alright, let's pull off this rear rotor housing. So literally it comes out like a Lego. Yeah, pretty much. Like a sandwich. Yeah, pretty much. And they're really light too, so it's not really heavy at mm -hmm. all. You got your spark plug holes there. Obviously the rotor sat in that area. You can see all of the water coming in through here, just stuck in there and now it's all rusted. Yeah, because they let it sit for quite a while with just water in it and it's got a bunch of corrosion build up on it. Yeah. And so, then how's the wear on it? Looks like this thing. No, no, the chrome's flaked off, but they they got some wear marks on them. Uh, so this one, I mean, you could reuse it, but I probably wouldn't recommend it. This one's kind of got a groove going in it right here. But yeah, so. That one, I mean, we could reuse it if we really had to, but if we're gonna build the motor the way we want to and have it last, it's probably not a good idea. <sighs> so now, what I'm gonna need you to do is I'm gonna need you to hold the, or push the e-shaft up from the bottom, okay. and then I'm gonna pull the center shank iron out. Oh, 
here we got the eccentric shaft and this is exactly where these two lobes right here this is where the basically where the rotors sit as you can see that there now this piece is actually pretty heavy yeah that i want to check for the wear so this is one of the three moving parts in these rotary engines There's some decent wear marks on this. I don't think it's too bad. All right, cool. So yeah, this is the E shaft and I'm just checking for wear, see if there's any like real big deep grooves in it at all. Cause that bearing was really messed up. So luckily it doesn't look like it messed up the E shaft too bad. Looks like this is gonna be reasonable. Here's the last rotor. I wish there was three, but fortunately, this is the 13B RE, not the 20B. <laughs> oh shit. Unfortunately, our pockets don't go that deep right now. Not right now. <laughs> Maybe in the future. We'll see. Man, you're dropping all those. It's okay. <laughs> we're, not, we're not using this. I know. It's not good. Yeah, and then so this rotor's got a little bit more carbon buildup on it than the other one. It doesn't look too bad. I don't know who rebuilt this motor previously, but they split. There's like an inner part to the um, to the corner seals, and they're like rubber in this corner seal for some reason. And it's like they smashed the cor the apex seals into them, and they're kind of like. I don't know what you would call it. They're just like squished in there and they're just mangled pretty much. So I don't know what was going on or what they did, but yeah, it's just, yeah, that's just carbon buildup. That'll burn off or we can clean that off before we put <laughs> the burn off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, A couple high revs, you know, it'll get that off. Yeah. No problem. Don't worry about that. A red liner day keeps the carbon away. Yeah. Keep your pop right there. Or just running 85 and then you don't have carbon problems. That is also true. Alright, and then we got... This one has a chip right there. Okay, so... I want to show you guys this kind of up close. So there's a chip in the, car, in the chrome right here. And also... I don't know if you guys can really tell, but it looks like somebody, when they're porting it, ran the bit across the face of it, oh, which is not shit. good. Um, is there anything else that's here? Okay. And you know what, I bet you that groove is probably because of how they slammed the apex seals into the, um, into the, uh, rotor and messed up the thing because I bet it wasn't letting it, you know, move like it should. Yeah, because it looked like it was pushed up more higher than it would have actually supposed yeah. to. Yeah. Because it was sitting like on the corners of that rubber piece. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, but other than that, the um, the actual irons don't look in bad shape. We can always just have them uh, resurfaced. Um, this bearing doesn't look too bad either. But, uh, a little bit of wear, but not too bad. Not as bad as the other one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace all the bearings in the motor. Um, you got your front stationary gear bearing and the rear. Replace those, and same with the rudder, the rudder bearings. And then we're gonna, of course, replace all the seals in it and run better seals. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think we're we're good to go to do a rebuild. Uh, we have a lot of work ahead of us, and then we also. Um, are gonna get some help with uh, built Apex and making some new um, custom mounts for the car. So that's gonna be another thing we'll be doing with built Apex, which is pretty cool. And especially for them to, or for him to step up and be like, hey, I can make you guys some mounts. 
yeah. which is cool. Um, better than the makeshift ones we have in the car right now. And then we don't have to worry about the motor falling out of the car either. <laughs> no one wants that happening. <laughs> Sitting there, freaking 8k on this freaking straight go to shit. Going 150 boom! miles an hour, and that shit just falls. Yeah. No, so we don't. No. Want that. So freaking. So we're gonna do that, and then um, we'll be showing you guys that, and then we got some other goodies that we're gonna be working with. So for now, thanks for watching, and uh, see you guys next time. Later.